What would you recommend in terms of planting in a small garden? Well, there's some general rules for all gardens. Okay. So start by knowing your conditions. Yeah. So have you got sandy soil, clay soil, all of that sort of stuff? Is it sunny or shady? And use that to sort of work out what you'd like to, to grow. If you are starting from scratch and you've got completely no idea about plants, then we do recommend the RHS Plant Finder because that, that's really helpful for beginners. You can put in all your conditions, the type of soil you've got, and it will just give you a list of, of good plants. But when you've got that list and you're deciding which ones to go for, there's a few key things you want to be looking out for. So that's nice open flowers, um, flowers that go for a long period of the year, um, things that cover lots of different types of, of plants, so shrubs and, and low, lower down plants, but also climbers to go over the walls as well. Yep. Our motto is plant more plants. If you've got a space, there's usually a plant that will fit it. Like if you, as Ben says, go on this RHS plant finder. But in terms of open flowers, what we mean is not full of frilly petals because quite often pollinators can't access the food within. So yeah, that's a really good tip. We really like shrubs in small gardens, which sounds counterintuitive because obviously they can be quite big, but actually it's been found that you get so much more bang for your buck, if you like. So one shrub, you're gonna have many, many flowers on, and some of them do flower over a really long period of time as well. And mm. that's absolutely fantastic food source for all sorts of wildlife, as well as being um, shelter for birds and things like that. So think of it as a small tree. That's a really good tip. Yeah, and picking plants that give you more than one season of interest. So for instance, we've got a lot of gardens we look after and in our own garden as well, we have pyracanther. So it's got a, an open flower. It's good for small, uh, short-tongued insects because they can get into the flower quite easily. But it flowers for a really long time. Um, the leaves are good for, for caterpillars that will eat the leaf. Um, but then also it's got berry later on in the year, which is great for the birds. And the birds absolutely love them. So yeah, that's a really good tip. And things like ivy as well, again, exactly the same on a wall. The leaves are really good for caterpillars, but it's got a huge amount of flowers. And that flowers really late in the year, which is really important to have flowers all the way from the spring, right the way through to the autumn. And because it flowers in sort of September time, that's when most of the other plants you'd get in the garden center are finished flowering. And it's just buzzing with bees and hoverflies late in the year. It's absolutely beautiful. And then a big blackberry as well. Um, which is great for it because it, the berry lasts right the way through to the spring and you get things like field fairs come in the the winter migrants and they absolutely love them too oh, that's brilliant so what about if you wanted a little vegetable patch or you wanted to grow some food is that possible in a small wildlife garden absolutely we have our little mint of right course. behind you of course. Um, currently no beans on it but there will be beans growing at those bean poles yeah, every year we choose a little crop and we don't get masses of food. We can't feed ourselves on it, yeah. but it, what we <laughs> <Snacks>. do... <Yeah. laughs> yes, exactly. But what we do get, we know it's organically grown because we are organic gardeners. Um, we also know that there's absolutely zero food miles on it. And what is better than stepping out your back door, feeling really twee with a basket in your hand <laughs> and collecting some homegrown veg. Like, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, and we have loads of herbs as well mm. because we have an allotment separately mm. and uh, we don't want to go all the way up to the allotment just to pick a bit of thyme or whatever. So we have it all here. We've got four or five different types of mint mm. and then we've got marjoram and oregano. We've got thyme, lemon verbena. Uh, yeah, so all of it is within 10 seconds from the door, which is absolutely brilliant. And all of them flower. And a lot of these herbs, especially Mediterranean herbs, and lavender is a great one as well, they have tons of flower and the bees really go nuts for them yeah mm. i suppose that's everything that you've mentioned so far it's anything that's kind of dual or triple perfect yeah. it's yeah. what you know it's something that does a lot of stuff so that's something you can feed yourself feed, feed yourselves the wildlife are going to enjoy it but also with the the stuff that you can't eat if like you're saying long flowering periods all of that kind of thing is that would you say that's the sort of key that people need to Absolutely. keep in mind you've only yeah. got a small space get the most out of it you don't want something that's as you say just like flowering for a very short period of time yeah. yeah, sort of pick things that way. Yeah, and definitely. remember to plant in layers. Mm. So we start with bulbs that are low growing. And as they start to die down, you know, as the spring rolls around and the bulbs die down, then the other plants come up mm. and then you've got the shrubs dotted in amongst them as well. Mm. So it's that, that, that variation in height mm. is also really important to allow birds to come in and have somewhere to look around the garden. And because often they'll, they'll be, they'll want to come in somewhere safe mm. and then they'll make sure that it's, it's okay in the garden and then they'll, they'll dip down into the border and, and yeah. go and have a, a rummage around. 
perfect. What about people who just have a balcony? Or let's just say they haven't even got a balcony, they've just got, you know, they haven't got an outdoor space at all and they want window boxes. In terms of planting, what would you recommend for them? You can do a surprising amount in a planter, for sure. As long as you've got, like, good healthy soil and compost mix in it. I would recommend the herbs personally because they're quite tough most of them they can take that extra sun that you might get on a window box um, and as ben said absolutely fantastic flower resource for all of our pollinators you can certainly grow tomatoes from window box if you want a food crop for yourself and obviously the tomato flowers need to be pollinated and provide another food source for different pollinators so i don't think it should be seen as a restriction. Mm. Like, I think if, if we did only have a window box, we'd certainly enjoy seeing what we could get away with mm. more than anything. Yeah, and don't forget, you can plant shrubs in pots as well. Mm. You know, if you've got a hanging basket, you can grow um, trailing rosemaries and they flower for ages. And the rosemary is still good for cooking. Um, you can grow things like nasturtiums, which would trail down as well. So, you know, if you've got a hanging basket, you don't have that just that much depth. You can trail things all the way down. But yeah, you can grow anything in a pot that you can grow in the border. So we have lots of um, hydrangeas. We've got salvias as well, which are hugely popular with all sorts of bees and bumblebees especially. Um, so we've got two different types of salvia here and you can just prune those down. Mm. So at the end of the year, if they get too big, you can just cut them down, keep them to size in the pot. And then next year they just come up with fresh growth. Perfect, that sounds good. What about climbing plants? Because obviously uh, you sort of mentioned about using the most of them all of the space so it's not just the kind of width and depth is it mm. it's also the the height what would you recommend yeah for that? You, you can actually make a small garden feel bigger with having things going up and over mm. you like certainly when we come out here having this Pfizer carpus next to me really does make the space feel bigger because it's quite a large shrub as you can see mm. but yeah in terms of climbers that's a really really good way of not taking up loads of room in your small garden mm. but still getting that greenery um, so we very much recommend it and behind you there's actually hydrangea simanii which is a good one for shade which we've managed to grow in a pot we'd prefer that one in the ground I think it would be a bit more vigorous but it's mm. it's doing absolutely fine with a bit of feed every couple of weeks yeah. um, Ben's mentioned the ivy that is an absolute all-rounder as well because it, it self clings which is you know you don't even need to put up wires and things like that yeah. but we'd recommend all sorts of things yeah like don't forget about scent as well because mm. you can grow so many climbing scented plants like honeysuckles yeah. really fantastic for bringing moth into your mm. garden if you bring in the moss you get the bats as well um, we've got clematis here and some of those are scented especially the winter flowering ones mm. and actually clematis are really good for that there are ones that will flower really early in the year january and february when mm. not a lot's out especially for the climbers so they're a good one to try and things like tracula spermum and jazz uh, the jasmines as well mm. all of the things that have scent attract insects into your garden mm. and all of them are really easy to keep under control as well so yeah great for a trellis or against a wall they also provide good habitat so it's not don't forget about that as well like we quite often put these almost mini shelves against someone's fence like little ledges of wood which we then allow plants to climb over and then that ledge allows something like a blackbird or a robin or any of the garden birds that will nest on these kind of platforms to make their nest onto it and it's giving you an extra extra layer of habitat so yeah, that works really well. Of course, you've, you've not got a lawn in your garden, but a lot of small gardens are, you know, just a lawn with a, with a fence or a hedge around, aren't they? Yeah. What, what would you suggest for someone in terms of sort of bringing more wildlife into a, into a garden like that? Well, this is something we've done. We actually put daisy plugs into a small lawn just around the corner for someone that we work with. Um, because, I mean, who doesn't love a daisy? And they're fantastic for pollinators and they look beautiful. We've got some lawns that are just almost all daisy. They stay greener for longer as well. And the only way, uh, all you have to do rather, is to not mow it as often. Mm. Or when you do mow, just to have that mower just a, a couple of centimetres higher than you might do, or than you might think you have to, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's it's so easy, isn't it? Like anyone can do that. Yeah. Any gardening tips that means you have to do less, yeah. I think is always a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for it to then look better as well. Yeah. Um, but we also recommend things like self-heal. Mm. That will also, it can become quite a big plant, but if you're constantly mowing it at sort of four centimetres high or, or maybe five if you can get away with that it will learn to flower at that height which is a really Love good it. tip um, yeah. and also clover is another fantastic one as well mm. which a lot of the parasitic wasps enjoy feeding on so mm. do you have some specific recommendations then of, of plants but particularly ones for small gardens yeah start early in the year get yourself some bulbs in 
Mm. So crocuses are really good and daffodils as well. Mm. And then even if you can't fit them in a border, you can just plant them in a, in a pot mm. and then tuck them away when they're finished. So start with those and then move on to some of the herbs. Like Ellie said, you know, thymes, oreganos and mint. If you allow them all to grow up and flower, really fantastic for wildlife. Mm. On your walls, try and get some ivy on. And uh, you can even have roses as well. Dog roses are native and absolutely fantastic for wildlife. And then in the border, open flowers, um, things like sa the salvias are really good. Foxgloves, you can get, well, mm. often they come up for free. Um, Veronicastrums and Veronicas, again, really good. Yep, and another thing some people might not realise is that on some plants you get the flower, which is obviously good for the pollinators if it's the right shape. Uh, but also when they go to seed, if they have been pollinated, some birds will take that seed. So that's what we mean when we say, make your plants sort of work for your small space. Make, if you pick plants that give lots of different um, interests for wildlife, then mm. that is a really uh, good way of yeah, helping local wildlife in your area. Mm. Yeah, so sanguine yeah. yeah. Thank you, that's what I was looking <laughs> <Yeah>. for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as an example down here, we've got a meadow crane's bill, which is a native plant, and it's just about to flower. The bees love it, all, all the uh, invertebrates love it, but then in a coufle of months it'll go to seed and then green finches will come and take the seed from it. So. Yeah, the same is true of sanguis orba, officinalis, and uh, teasel. Really easy teasel. to grow in any garden, yeah. and yet yeah, goldfinches will come, come and take the seeds. Mm.